In an effort to restore the king of Applesauce Lorraine to his rightful throne, Bullwinkle came to a sudden decision. Let's go home. We can't do that. We gotta save the country. Along with Athos, who believed them to be his old musketeer comrades, Aramis and Porthos. That's uh, Aramis. They arrived at a castle belonging to the evil Francois Villain. He's the only one who can tell us where the king is. Alas, Villain not only knew where the king was, but what our heroes were up to, thanks to the traitorous actions of one Philippe Mignon. Watch, Mignon. I know how to deal with the likes of them. Moments later, the three musketeers were set upon by a murderous squad of Francois Villain's best swordsmen. All would have been lost had it not been for Bullwinkle's unorthodox, but most effective, ability at skewering shish kebab. In the end... Our heroes emerged victorious. Sacre bleu Aramus, you are a master swordsman. Wasting no time, they entered the castle only to find themselves suddenly trapped in a steel room with the walls closing in on them. Small world, isn't it? And it's getting smaller all the time. I wish I was in Dixie. Closer and closer the walls came until... Bullwinkle, do something! Right, porthole! What are you doing with a yo-yo at a time like this? This is the way I always wanted to go. Nero fiddle while Rome burned. Toby wing. Oh, for gosh sake! Oddly enough, it was the yo-yo that saved them, for just overhead, looking down through a metal trap door... Why did you stop the presses? Because, idiot, I have never seen a yo-yo. Then how did you know it was a yo-yo? Look at it. What else would you call a thing like that? <laughs> Remarkable. How much do you want for this? You can have it for nothing if you give us jobs as cooks. The price is right. But for smiles, they are spies. Well, hello there, Mr. Mignon. I haven't seen you since our secret meeting when you were plotting to overthrow his nastiness here. So, you give to me the triple cross, no? Francois, it is part of my job. And this is part of mine. Take him away. <laughs> Thus, Philip Mignon found himself behind bars while the three musketeers found themselves in the scullery preparing the evening meal. What are we going to cook, Rock? Francois Goose, I hope. That uh, should have been my line, Rock. But there was no time to switch, for the plucky squirrel immediately set about the task of baking a huge cake. Put these eggs in a bowl and beat it, Bullwinkle. Right. By the time Bullwinkle got back, the cake was completed. Now, here's the plan. One of us will get inside the cake, and when it's on the table, he can overhear where Francois hiding the king. Well, seeing as how I always put my foot in it anyway, this time I'll put in the whole moose. Step aside. The cake and the plan were carried out, but not to the banquet hall, but to cell number 13, where two convicts whiled away their sentence playing checkers. It is your turn to move, Pierre. So involved were they, they neglected to notice the cake. Eventually, it was returned to the scullery. How did it go, Bullwinkle? Did you find out what happened to the king? Yeah, he was jumped three times. Then the little guy with the red checkers, he... It was obvious that the plan had gone awry. This time, Rocky himself set the cake directly in front of Francois. What is this, cake? In honor of Applesauce Day. We celebrated that last week. Well, how about Lorraine Day? She's never been here. Dennis was here, but not Lorraine. We eat the cake anyway. For the hungry Francois grabbed a massive carving knife and prepared to cut the cake. Will our next episode be in two parts? Be with us next time for Just Desserts or Operator, We've Been Cut Off. <laughs>